Alrighty, so today we're breaking down the uh, the co-main event for the August 8th card, headlined by Derek Lewis and uh, Alexi Olenek. Uh, so yeah, there's the co-main event, you know, Chris Weidman's still, still a pretty prevalent name in the middleweight division, so he probably, you know, even though he's on a bit of a slump at the moment, um, which is an understatement, uh, he's still got a pretty decent name. So that's, that's why they're making this fight, and also the you know they're rewarding Amari because he's been pretty active, and he's he's been winning a lot of fights. He's undefeated in his last six fights. Chris, yeah, as we said before, he's on a decline. He's he's well, he's thirty six years old now, so he's he's pretty close to retirement. If not, this is his last fight, uh, unless he unless he wins, because then obviously then there's you know he's going to get a bigger fight after that, but. If he loses this one, he's probably going to have to hang it up. Uh, and there would be no shame losing to Omari, but it's just from a, you know, a status point of view, Omari is not on his level. Um, not skill-wise, of course, but just as a name and as in the rankings, like if you look at it that way. <clears throat> uh, Chris, he's 1-5 and five in his last six, being KO'd five times. That's... Uh, all of his losses have been by KO. He's got a two-inch height advantage in this one and a five-inch reach advantage. He will be the much bigger guy. Uh, he's gone a decision once in his last 11 fights. So, But this is a three-rounder. A lot of his fights have been five-rounders, as he's been the champ and he's been a main event a few times. Uh, but usually his fights don't go to decision. Either he gets finished or he like locks up a submission or gets on top and TKOs them. Uh and yeah. So we'll break down the striking for both these guys. Uh so we'll break down Omari first. So Omari uh he's he's pretty flat footed, plants his feet and just throws heat pretty much. He'll put everything into his strikes, tries to tries to knock you out even though I'm not totally convinced of his of his power. Well, his, his his KO power as that, you know. Um, he probably has, you know, significant force behind his punches, but not too much, like, concussive power or anything like that. Because he's... What's he got? Like, one knockdown in the UFC? No finishes by KO. So, I'm not totally convinced by his power, but he does throw with a lot of force. Um, and he will brawl. Saw that in the Dos Santos fight. So that the Vittori fight, like he will bite down the mouthpiece and just start swinging hooks. Most of his punches do come uh, from from around the way. He's throwing hooks or overhands. Uh, he generally doesn't throw down the pipe very often. And that has been mostly what Chris has been knocked out with. I can't remember one time he's been knocked out with like, well, I can't, mm, yeah, I can't remember one time he's been knocked out with a, like a looping punch or anything. Usually his defense is pretty good for looping punches, keeps the guard up pretty well and has pretty decent footwork as well for a 185er. Uh, and yeah, the, the two times he got caught was a straight left down the middle from Reyes and a straight right down the middle from, uh, what's his name? Jack Ray. Uh, but Chris does have a lot of holes in his striking. Uh, one is that when he's backing up, he just kind of leans back uh, to evade the strike, kind of like a, how James Vick evades strikes. So, yeah, that's obviously not great. Uh, leans back, obviously, if the opponent were to follow up, uh, they would catch him with like a left hook or something right on the chin because uh, when he is leaning back, his hands do drop because he just kind of leans back relying on that head movement uh, and some most of the time it's not enough uh, but when he's on the front foot his striking defense is pretty good he parries and rolls with punches pretty well uh, it's on the back foot where he usually gets in trouble and Amari he um <clears throat> he's usually on the back foot he's not usually the aggressor he's mostly a counter puncher backs up backs up backs up plants his feet and swings uh, so he's trying to reel you in for a, for a counter shot really most of the time. And Chris will probably give him what he wants because Chris will probably be the aggressor. Comes in with that jab, trying to push them back. You know, he's, he's fainting a lot. He throws a lot of feints, a lot of jabs. Uh, and one thing Omari does is that when, uh, his opponent does jab, he leans back to his right, uh, exposing his chin. 
uh, especially when he's tired, because uh, when he's tired, his hands drop pretty pretty significantly. Uh, and then he can easily be caught with the one-two uh, from an orthodox fighter. I think, uh, was it Dos Santos who caught him with a nice one-two? Um, nice one two when Amari was just leaning back and I think that fight is is the closest example we're going to get to a simulation of this fight because DeSantos is also someone who will come forward uh, has decent straight punches uh, and obviously doesn't have the wrestling of Chris Weidman but that's how I think the striking will go pretty much <clears throat> uh, Amari will he'll um is yeah, he's pretty tricky as well. Like he's pretty accurate. Like he's he's uh he's pretty accurate with his counter punches. Uh, he'll follow a lot of his uh straight punch. Well, he'll follow a lot of his twos with a uh like a really hard left hook. He's got a really heavy low kick that he barely ever goes to, but you can tell like his opponents hate it when they kick when he kicks their calf. Um, also he'll catch a kick and then throw a heavy like right overhand or a right hook. Uh, for Chris Weidman, he's um, he's not a bad striker. He's pr- he's pretty decent. He's got decent hands. Doesn't have the you know best power or anything, but uh, he's got pretty decent boxing. Uh, he's got decent kicks as well. De- decent t- uh, teeps that he um, who did he hit with like really well? I think uh, Musasi. He was hitting pretty well with the teeps. Uh, so I wouldn't mind if he goes back to that for this fight because Amari is pretty flat-footed, so the body will be open, and Amari doesn't have the greatest gas tank, so it'd be nice to, like, kind of just wear at that body and uh, try and wear Amari down just by keeping at a distance as well. Uh, so Chris Weidman, he keeps the lead hand out pr- uh, pretty pretty much the whole time. Uh, he's just trying to gauge distance with that, and then also gives him easy access for the jab, which is one of his main weapons. Uh, but also with that is that his left hand never really returns to his chin, uh, which leaves him open for right overhands or right, you know, uh, right hooks from orthodox fighters or, you know, right hooks from uh, southpaw fighters. So that kind of leaves him open because uh, he never really brings it back up to his chin. He kind of just hangs it out there, always keeps it extended. Uh, so Amari will be looking at that because Amari's favorite punch is the right overhand and the right hook if he catches a body kick or something like that. Uh, so Chris will have to be vigilant of that. Also, Chris, uh, is he's actually pretty... He actually opens up a lot when he's versing southpaws. He's got a nice body kick, nice high kick, opens up the kicks a lot more. Uh, he throws a lot more kicks, leg kicks, uh, yeah, when he's versing southpaws, but obviously that won't be relevant in this fight. And yeah, he has, you know, pretty good footwork for a 185er. And he's uh, he's uncomfortable when he's pressured, but that won't be a problem in this fight because I can't see Amari pressuring him. It's just not his style. And then the grappling, uh, where it really gets interesting in this fight because, um, you know, they're both pretty decent grapplers. Uh, so for Chris, he, he's got some pretty nice wrestling, really nice single leg. When he gets on the single leg, he'll either run the pipe or snatch it up and go for a knee tap and uh, get the opponent down that way. Uh, when he's when he's like on the fence, when he's clinched up against the fence, he'll drop down for a double leg and uh, put them on their ass. And you saw Amari has been done with that a few times versus Nats Nielsen and uh, who's the other guy that took him down? Can't remember, but uh, Nats Nielsen did it to him pretty easily. Uh, so I don't think Chris White would have too much of a problem, even though that fight was like four years ago. But uh, Amari's Amari did everything right. He got the underhooks and like all that, but he just didn't spread his legs far enough. Uh, and then obviously, yeah, didn't have a strong enough base. So Chris uh, could exploit that. Could you know get the get the single transit do a double on the fence, drive him to the fence. That's why I see Chris's path to victory in this fight is probably through the wrestling. Uh, he doesn't want to stay on the feet with a guy who throws so much heat as Amari because obviously he's got to be realistic about his chin. 
And yeah, Chris, uh, when he gets the body lock, he'll he'll uh, he'll keep one hook in, like he'll he'll keep one hook wrapped around the body, and then he'll go for a knee tap or an ankle pick, uh, and just kind of use the opponent's momentum against them and take them down that way. And when he's on the when he's on the mat, he'll stay in half guard and look to land ground a pound. He doesn't look to advance unless the opponent gives him an opportunity. Uh, so when he's in, you know, half guard, and he's just GMPing or ground and pounding, uh, his opponent, you know, if they do want to get up, they'll probably have to turtle to their back, and that's when Chris tries to take the back because he's already like technically got one hook in with the half guard. And Amari, Amari, as I said before, he's got decent takedown defense. When he does get dropped to the mat, he um, well, he has good get ups, but. He used a lot of brute force to get up, and that can also strain the gas tank, which he doesn't have the greatest as well. Uh, but yeah, he put the feet on the hips, he'll push off with all his might, or he'll, uh, if that doesn't work, he'll just kind of bench press them off, which isn't which isn't advised, but uh, it seems to work for him, uh, unless he's versing like a superior grappler like Gunnar Nelson, uh, which he ran into. So that obviously didn't work for Gunnar. Uh, and I can't see it working for Chris either, who, you know, is a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And uh, Amari has decent takedowns as well. He has pretty... Uh, he drives through a lot of his blast doubles pretty well. Uh, he'll set up the blast double with a, like, a faint, faint right overhand. And then uh, the opponents will cover up, bring their guard up, and then that opens up the legs for the double leg. And uh, when he is on the ground, he'll rip ground and pound as well. He'll kind of grab onto the legs and just start ripping left, left, uh, sorry, right hooks. Um, so how these guys win? Uh, for Omari Akhmedov, he's got really good timing on his counters. He's pretty well-rounded as a fighter. Sets up his takedowns really well. Uh, he's got a granite chin as opposed to Chris Weidman. And yeah, he's got decent takedown defense when he's not tired. And for Chris Weidman, he is a really nice single leg. That's, you know, his bread and butter. Uh, he's got pretty good feints. Uh, people don't talk about that enough. Obviously, he's got a really good wrestling game. Came from a Division One NCAA background. And he's pretty good on the mat as well. Got a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt, I think, from John Danaher. Or maybe it's Matt Serra, which isn't as impressive. But if it's John Danaher, then... Well, he trains with Don Hanna, uh, Danaher, like, routinely, so... Uh, it's he's still pretty legit black belt. And how these guys lose for Chris Weidman, obviously the chin is an issue. Can't not speak about Chris Weidman, not talk about his chin. If you're gonna have any confidence in betting on him, you have to be realistic about his chin. It's it's super shot. Uh, and Omari, you know, even though he's not the biggest power puncher, could definitely put him out with one strike. Uh, and he's got poor striking defense on the back foot. Slows in the championship rounds, obviously won't be a factor in this one, and he doesn't wear damage well, he gets cut pretty easily, gets bruised pretty easily, uh, yeah, like he just doesn't wear damage very well. For Amari Akhmedov, obviously the gas tank's an issue, slows considerably in the third round, and even late second round in, like, not even high-paced fights. That was probably worse in one, at 170 than it is in 185. He's shown, like, an inc improved cardio, but still, he hasn't been in a really high-paced fight, which Chris is going to give him uh, in 185 yet, I believe. Marvin Vittori, but yeah, obviously, he gassed in that one. Uh, and yeah, he's on the back foot often, so obviously, that's his game plan, and, that, and that's been working for him as he's undefeated in his last six fights, but... Uh, if it's a fit, if it's a really close fight, like they're both landing on each other, uh, they're probably going to give it to the, the, the aggressor in the octagon. And that will probably be the person on the front foot. And that's probably going to be Chris Weidman. Uh, so just from a judge's perspective, Amari doesn't do his, do himself any favors by backpedaling the whole fight. Pass to victory for both these guys. We'll do Amari first. Uh, if he follows up the like a like a right overhand or a right straight with the left hook. Uh, I think he could catch Chris Weidman if uh, Chris is on the back foot. 
Or, yeah, if Amari just bursts forward and tries to throw a combo. But, yeah, f- follow it up with the left hook. Uh, scramble back to feet when... Uh, yeah, so Chris, when he's throwing ground and pound, he'll posture up and uh, look to land the ground and pound. So, obviously, that's a, that's a hole that you can exploit. And once he's posturing up, you can just put the feet in the hips and just push off and create a mad scramble and just try and get up that way. So that's, you know, an easy way out if you're on the ground. Uh, and obviously look for the hard counters when Chris is throwing the throwing the kicks. And uh, try and catch a kick and throw a hard two. Uh, if you can catch one of his teeps or his body kicks, then, yeah, catch it, throw a hard two. His left hand will probably be not near his chin. So could get some serious damage on that one. For Chris Weidman, his pass to victory... Uh, feints, forward pressure, uh, keep him on the back foot, you know, try and tire him out, keep to the body early, try and work the body quite a fair bit, heavily grappling game plan, uh, game plan. So, yeah, just keep trying to uh, wear Amari down, uh, before the, before the, you know, the, the latter stages of the second round, because that's the best chance you're probably going to get to get a decision here. Because Amara probably will be landing the more significant strikes. Uh, so you want to, yeah, get the grappling on. Uh, if he leg kicks, uh, just try and shoot. Shoot for a single. Uh, because he's pretty heavy when he's throwing those leg kicks on the lead leg. So, yeah, look for a single leg well, uh, when he's throwing that. Obviously, try and keep your distance. Uh, just make sure you exit range, which usually you know sometimes you don't do uh so just make sure you're exiting range once you land that jab or the two and amari does dip every time he throws a boxing strike so maybe look for some uppercuts but just be careful because i have seen when chris is throwing an uppercut his defense is like really poor and he he loads up the uppercut uh way too telegraphed so uh, just be careful of that, but um, obviously it's a strike you c- can throw because Amari does dip his head every single strike, and he's usually not even looking at his opponent uh, when he dips his head. Uh, and when you know you do have him on the mat, don't let him get uh, his feet on your hips. Just make sure you're vigilant of that. Just trying to elbow his feet uh, away from your hips every time he gets close, because that's he's you know he's a very explosive dude. He'll push away. He'll create a fair bit of distance, and he will get up to his feet. Uh, and yeah, so Amari, he as we talked about before, he plants and he fires. So when he plants, you can you can tell because obviously he's going to lower his level. That's when you can shoot in for a blast double or a snatch single because he'll be very heavy. He won't be, he won't be very, you know, mobile. So grab onto that leg and just start working for a takedown when he loads up. Uh, so how I see this one going, obviously it's a tough one to call because it's hard to be confident in Chris Weidman. Uh, but Chris's chin is super gone, but I'm not totally convinced of uh, Amari's concussive power. Chris has the advantage in the wrestling, I believe, and the single will be open. Uh, definitely. Uh, so Chris obviously needs to use his footwork to be to win this one. Be in and out of range. Uh, be very vigilant of Amari's right overhand, which he has been, you know, which he can be caught by because he obviously leaves that left hand low. Um, so. On the feet, I see it's pretty even as well. Uh, obviously, Amari probably has the power advantage and the chin advantage. Definitely the chin advantage. But uh, on the feet, yeah, it's pretty it's pretty close. Uh, I see them landing the probably the same amount of volume. I see Amari landing them more significant strikes in the judges' eyes, even though I'm not totally convinced of the amount of damage it's doing. Uh, but it just sounds like it's doing a lot of damage because he puts a lot of, you know elastic force in it but Chris he does have decent boxing as well I could see him you know jabbing Amari a lot you know Amari's got a big nose a big target on his face so uh, if he could just jab that nose uh, you know break it maybe you know get a bloody frustrate Amari that could be that could be definitely a possibility in this fight 
Uh, so all in all, I've gone for Weidman by decision. I think I think he wins this fight around 58 to 55 percent of the time, which gives you odds of about one dollar seventy two to about one dollar eighty. Uh, so at the moment, I see his a little bit of value at one dollar ninety. It's uh, even odds at the moment. So honestly, I think Weidman does win this fight. I think he's more skilled than Amari, and the line is just indicative of the narrative that Amari, I mean, sorry, that, that Chris's chin is gone, which obviously it is, but he's been versing, he's been versing, like, killers for a while. Like, no shame being knocked out by Dominic Reyes. That guy's got, like, really good power. Uh, no, sh- well, Jack Ray hit him. He was taking Jack Ray's shots the whole fight, uh, and he knocked down Jack Ray, I believe. Uh, but he just got caught by one of those weird punches that uh, that Jai Herbert got caught with uh, last week. It's just one of those weird punches on the noggin that, that really just throws you off. I think it just hit a button or something like that. Um, obviously, the Gay Guard Musasi one was kind of weird, so can't take too much into that. Uh, the the Rockhold one was pretty bad, uh, but I think that was more fatigue. Uh, what was the other one? Romero, that was bad, but... Yeah, that's that was bad, but uh, I can't see Amari doing anything like that. Uh, yeah, but um, all in all, I've gone for Chris Weidman, and yeah, the odds, you know, $1.95 Chris. So if we get him at plus $2, I'll, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking of checking five units on him already at, at even money. But uh, if we get, you know, $2, $2.20, I'd probably chuck seven units on $2.20. Uh, so, yeah. So, that's what I believe is the play for this fight. And I've already said how I think this fight's going to go down. So, act accordingly and, uh, you know, bet responsibly. And uh, we'll see you guys next week.